All right, everybody, welcome back to the move. This is a little different, as you can see, if you're watching this on, on one of the video channels. Yes, LA upgraded, <laughs> huh? And no, you don't have to look at George or Johan or JB anymore. That's right. Allison Tetrick over there in San Luis Obispo, Mari Holden down in Colorado Springs. Today's show brought to you by Zwift. I, you know, and, and much to everybody's um, pleasure here, I because I, I wasn't going to shower after the We Do Wednesday, which I just did. We had 600 people on there. It was so cool. Tons of folks, 200 people on Discord, um, hammered out an hour, and, uh, and, and I showered. So, but uh, I got to say that, and Mari, I see your pain cave right there behind you. <laughs> that's yes, uh, that, that's convenient <laughs> for, for, uh, for this partnership, but... I've been, uh, and Mar, you've been a great supporter and, and coming on the Suffer Sundays, which are just- Which are killing me. <laughs> I mean- <laughs> But they're good. <laughs> let's, Paul Francis is a sicko. I mean, <laughs> like, and, and by the way, mine on, my, on our time zone, same as you, starts at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. But I have fallen in love with Zwift. I, I poo-pooed it forever. I said, you know, I'm never, I am an outdoor kitty. I got claws. I'm going outside. I'm not riding inside and I have been fully converted. It, it, it just, uh, I don't know. And obviously this time of year, we can't ride outside in Colorado, but it's the coolest thing. I get on there, hammer for an hour, bam, bam, get it done. Well, Amazing. the best part is you can be with your friends, like all right. over the world and still be riding with them and out there suffering, which we do on Sundays. <laughs> yeah, no, we, it's cool mm -hmm. on our, we do Wednesdays. We have people like, mm -hmm. I think it's a thing. Like people just chime mm -hmm. in and say, hello from Nova Scotia. Hello from, you know, uh, Halifax, you know, all these, uh, 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 Ireland and South Africa. It's crazy. But somebody was up super early from Australia today. They made sure to let us know. <laughs> Extra <Fans>. points. <laughs> Extra points. All right. So today we're we're just like we did a little while ago with, with the men's coverage. We're talking about uh, 2021 highlights in women's professional cycling. And this is, this is not just a, and I, we've alluded to this and talked about it before. It's not this isn't a one-off. We are, uh, all of us here at We Do are going just guns a-blazing in 2022 and, and, and covering women cycling and giving them the, the, the coverage that they deserve. I mean, this sport is, it's fun to see. I mean, I think on the men's side, it's, it's, I, I find it to be more and more exciting. But as I start to watch more and more uh, women cycling, it's uh, obviously amazing athletes and just tons of great stuff to talk about. So um, we look forward to that. And then, of course... Um, and speaking of Zwift, uh, bringing back the women's tour finally in 2022. Um, so we'll cover that uh, uh, as well exclusively. So uh, should we jump in? We Just like we did on the men's show, these are in no particular order. We are asking our members, this is the part I'm going to screw up. We're asking our members to help us, to please vote. We all have our opinions here. We all nominated these uh, outstanding performances. But we want to hear from y'all. And, and, and again, this is the part I fuck up. Uh, Allison knows uh, what to do, I believe. So you guys are watching this on the live portal, but you have to click on the event to vote. And God, I, um, I love you. So, yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And I, now I'm glad you showered, but it doesn't matter because I'm so far away. But now I know why you're late for this. It's cool. It but made me shower. Click on the event and watch live, but to vote, click on the event. And then we will, and then, and as the, the votes come in, we will, um, we'll tell you guys at the end, just like we did on the other show, we'll start it at the bottom and, and work our way to the, to, to, to the people's favorite. So uh, let's jump back in. Uh, and, and again, this is in no particular order. This is just the way we're going to fire them. You guys vote and uh, we'll read that off. So uh, first on my list, and, and this is a great story um, because I, I followed her career for years um, and, and the crash that she had a couple of years ago was so nasty. If you didn't see the picture, so we're talking about Chloe Digert and her comeback from, um, I've never seen a crash like this. I mean, I've always imagined <clears throat> that a guardrail could do that to somebody, but I've never actually seen it. And to see the photos and the evidence and just the aftermath was so bad. Um, so yes. I, Ooh. yeah, nasty 2020. Yeah, go ahead, Mari. No, I was just going to say, when you see an injury like that, you just automatically, your, your first thought is, are, you know, are they ever going to be able to use their leg again, let alone race again? So, yes, yeah, so this is 2020 World Championships, right? Chloe's defending. She was the youngest, um, is still the youngest world champion time trialist ever. 
um, for women. Uh, she won it in 2019. She's coming back to defend and it's in a MOLA, right? And she goes off in a guardrail and I will never look at a guardrail the same. Every time I ride by them now, I'm like, yikes, those are terrifying. Those are sharp, but 80% laceration of her left leg. Like she's strong enough to pedal with one leg, but that's insane. Mm. And, and, uh, and how fast do we think she was going? She was going fast and this wasn't, I mean, obviously you have to be going pretty quick to, to create an incision like that, but she was moving. It was on a descent. Um, and they did actually for the, the race the next day, which was the men's time trial, they did bail that, um, because if you took that corner wrong, I mean, things weren't going to go well. Um, she was definitely going about, I think 34 miles an hour, I believe. What was it? Um, Ooh. I think that's about right. Yeah fast <laughs> and 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 mari maybe you uh because you've worked with her on on uh of course now team 2024 but uh and she moved teams and how mm-hmm. is how is all of that playing out like the you know it's always there's always some you know assimilation or transition when you go to a new program new teammates new coaches new structure like, how is that? Well, I mean, I think they've been really supportive of her, obviously. You know, I mean, she did one one race this year besides the Olympics, basically. She was won the uh, time trial on the road for nationals and then the Olympics. So, I mean, it's it's pretty wild. And they've been behind her, you know, in her comeback and then let her relax after Worlds so, or not Worlds, after the Olympics so that she could prepare for next season and come into it, you know, in shape this time, ready to go. Yeah, so they they so. have confirmed that she will she stills her contract through twenty twenty four with Canyon Ceram. So Ronnie Locke, um, I've worked with him before. He's their director, and they said they support her in her recovery. She just had two surgeries um, this off season, and yeah. uh, training officially started I think December third. Yeah. But <laughs> she's looking really good too. She lives what? just down the street from me, and she, I mean, is doing great. So I, I'm. You know, as far as her comeback this year for the Olympics, in my mind, it's incredible what she did. Um, But I think that moving forward is even going to be more exciting because, you know, when she comes into 2022, it'll be her first real road season over in Europe. And, you know, the future is wide open for her if she can get healed up from these injuries. Yeah, and I didn't want to when you started to say she looked I don't. Did you catch the Instagram post yesterday? You know, we all, we all just kind of go down whatever the stream. And I, and I was like, I mean, whoa. I didn't know what I was. I was like, Whoa. Yeah. I mean that I was like, uh, keep, keep moving Lance. Keep moving. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, that, that, that's, that's a, that, I like bold things like, Hey, she, Chloe's she a bold character. No, know? I, I, I'm I mean, starting to understand that, which is good. That's what, that's what she needs. You know, and she's just, she's full on. I, you know, she's young and she's learning a lot of things and, you know, maybe some things are mistakes and some things you move on from and stuff, but yeah, she's a bold individual (laughs) and you never, you know, as far as directing her when she was a junior and, you know, young athlete, it was one of those things where she always just kind of exceeded your expectation. Like you have an idea of what you think is going to happen or be normal. And then when somebody is so talented that they just make that strategy seem easy it's just it's pretty mind-blowing to work with and then for her first time going over to your race in europe was world championships when she won the you know won the time trial there and then did well in the road race so and then, of course shocking. we can't forget the, the colorado uh, the, uh, well yeah the, that was, i mean that was just <laughs> well, that was a straight beat down like, that was a beat down <laughs> that was a beat down mari mari was oh my my, my director and chloe's director at the same time so <laughs> so god i'm like a glutton for punishment or something <laughs> but i would i would argue on the chloe comeback i have no doubt she is bold she's learning she's growing um this is a setback that she's going to overcome but i would i would argue Argue that it's not quite the her comeback yet. 2022 is going to be an, an interesting time for her to shine and and get in the in the trenches of some of those spring classics if, if she's ready and, and to see what her real comeback looks like. Okay. Well, comeback and development both at the same time because I mean I look at it from she's never raced a season over in Europe. This is I mean I think it's going to be exciting to watch how she deals with the different types of racing in the in the deeper fields like on a weekly kind of basis and 
she'll be, you know, you learn things when you're more under pressure and she wasn't under that same kind of pressure here in the road racing. So I think that when she gets into those fields and starts to really learn how to race her bike, the next few years are going to be really exciting. So I think Canyon Tram has a, you know, a amazing, well, obviously has an amazing athlete on their hands, but it's going to be interesting to watch how she develops. Okay. All right. What's your luck? Uh, mm-hmm. All right. Up next. Uh, and this was one of my votes. I know we all sort of, uh, um, you know, lobbed in our, our, our picks, but the, the domination of the Swiss women at the Olympic mountain bike race. Now we can break all this down, but for any, at this level, right, we're talking about the Olympic games for, for any sport, for a country to sweep the medal and sweep the podium is you just, I don't care what sport it is, whether it's the marathon or swimming or, or whatever, you just don't see it. I mean, this was talk about a beat down. The last time we saw a sweep of a country was 1904. Okay. And see, yep. there you go. That is that true? 1904? 1904. It was a track and field event where for USA, the, this event no longer exists, but a country has not swept a podium since 1904. <laughs> That's Damn. <laughs> well, see now there, that, 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 um, that says a lot. Yeah. And- it was just dominant performance. I mean, you know, we, we talked about it before, but the course was bone dry the day before we have our, you know, ramp gate, which we talked about, um, right. <laughs> and, and they moved the course that, and, and you have the typhoon coming the night before. Um, and then they shortened the course a little bit, uh, from 4.1 K to 3.85 K. Um, and they took out this rock feature because the course just got flooded by this typhoon and, um, very limited time to pre-ride the course. And we all know, um, which we like to call her Sandy puff. Yolanda Neff is the best technical rider out there, but right. she's coming back from a ruptured spleen cra- collapse lung. And then six weeks prior, we're just seeing her form coming back and she breaks her hand in a world cup. Mm. And it was interesting because these, you know, the, the, uh, and if you watched the, the, any of the mountain bike stuff at the Olympics, these are, these are, uh, custom made courses, right? This isn't like, if you think about, or if I think about mountain bike and I'm like, oh, okay, these are the trails I ride on here. They could easily make a world cup course there, an Olympic course. No, they just went in and like, okay, this park is now going to be a mountain bike course. Like, I, I think that's just, I thought that was so cool pretty wild that they can go in there and just build out exactly what they're imagining for you know the ideal course and everything it's pretty great it was a beautiful course um so basically this is just gonna be we got yolanda neff back on she's former world champion um pauline pervo obviously did wonderful i mean there's just crashes mayhem like yolanda just didn't make a mistake so after the first lap she's just like out to lunch like a minute and a half ahead celebrating um, and, and carolina did remember that one move she just she just took the wrong line and that was that was that that, that cost her it, uh, maybe maybe not the race because uh, the others were so dominant but it definitely cost her the opportunity to disrupt something that hasn't happened since 1904 she just couldn't get it back after that and if you think about it the swiss men had one medalist so a silver medalist he got yeah second so they got four out of the six medals in mountain bike that's pretty impressive. So dominant performance. Um, and so Cena Frey got second and then Linda's came in third. So they're trading off on the climbs and the flats. I don't think they're necessarily working together. It's just they were excelling in different parts of the course. How do you, but, how do you think it is that they get are so much better technically? Obviously the course is like super technical once you have to make those kinds of changes. Is that something that do they train on that in the off seasons and like with trainers together or how does that work what i heard from the swiss team is they changed uh, equipment completely so they only could like pre-ride the course in a short window due to the really bad weather and they Mm. just switched tires switched everything and other people were so focused on how they pre-rode all their prep you know because they raced this course what two years ago you know as everyone knows this course Mm -hmm. and there were some major decisions and changes made by the swiss national team coach. And I yeah. think that is literally the big difference. It's That's, like, it's like you Lance, like going to go do a time trial and you have everything planned and then they just change it up. You're like, you're actually riding your road bike. Right. Whoops. <laughs> with well, that, yeah, but, but they really went with it and it obviously it paid off. No, I mean, it, it, it look tire selection and tire pressure. <laughs> I mean, makes it, it's, it, 
it's it's like F1, the the importance of tires and and, and new tires, old tires, uh, pressure. It makes all the difference. Like if and, and if you have somebody that feels like they have the right combination, uh, it's 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 a well, very did. <laughs> yeah exactly. So the good thing they followed his advice because mm-hmm. it's a, especially when it's sloppy and and technical, huge mm-hmm. huge difference. So well, good for them. Is it not since 1904? Damn. I wasn't even alive then. <laughs> Another one. Yeah. Uh, right quick before we jump into a few more selections. Today's show also uh, brought to you by Athletic Brewing. Does it, this is a question for both of y'all because I know I've been around both of y'all enough. You like your glasses of wine and a couple of cocktails here and there. All right. 20% of Americans are going to take January completely off. Dry January. I am one of the 20%. Right. So if you have big goals, whatever it is, an athletic event, you want to lose some weight, you want to clean it up. Athletic brewing is the way to go. So these guys love beer. They love craft beer. They love IPAs. They love like real good beer. And so, but they wanted a non-alcoholic version. So they came along, totally reinvented uh, this industry, all the crap that people used to drink before. No, now you can have real craft beer that has zero alcohol. Um, and, and, you know, whether you're sober curious or it's dry January, doesn't matter. Bill and his crew, they've reinvented the industry. I'm super proud of them. Uh, psyched to have them on the show. Head on over to Athletic Brewing. That's athleticbrewing.com. And use the code LANCE25, LANCE25. All right. So I, ne- what? Are we, I was, are we- I'm going back. Like, I'm doing our bookkeeping here. Okay. Did so I, did I mess? Re- no, you did great. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to order some. Af- I'm going I'm to get it. I'm going to do it. We can um, send you some. Yeah, I would like that. <laughs> I'm going to do dry January, but I want to try too. <laughs> yeah. January 2nd, <laughs> January 2nd. I'll we'll start. Um, but if you are watching the live stream on the portal homepage, you won't be able to see the voting. So just a reminder, if you guys are on the live, you can vote, click into the actual podcast, and then you'll be able to see the voting under the live stream. So God, I love you. That's amazing. Like, I don't even, that was like Greek to me. <laughs> we okay, want you to here- vote. <laughs> here's here here's another one i voted for and and i and i do man i watch this and i mean it, i but it, it, it speaks to a lot uh that was just so cool about this race and i'm gonna mess up the pronunciation even though i tried to write down the correct pronunciation anna kiesenhofer well done thank Good you <laughs> kiesenhofer winning the olympic uh women's road race i think uh I mean, to me, this is a story about outside of the exceptional performance. It's a story about what happens in a bike race when you don't have race radio. I think it, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong, which you will. It just, it changed everything. And I, and I'm not complaining. I thought, I thought it was awesome. It did change everything and it made it super exciting. Um, but I, it, it's pretty wild to think that during that whole race, the whole amount of time she was off the front, people didn't really realize that she was out there. That That's what's surprising to me, that with all the times you go back to the team car and all that information that you can get, that it still was so hard for people to keep track of the front of the race, the Dutch team particularly, like what was happening, and then sharing that information amongst their teammates. With with circuits at the end. So just oh, yeah, how, about we, how about we station somebody out there to say... <laughs> You're not winning. You're 20 seconds or whatever. I mean, it, it, yeah. it's not that tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Anna Kiesenhofer is is a really interesting um, individual and athlete. She's a, a PhD mathematician. She studied partial differential mm-hmm. equations. And I'm a biochemist and I'm still like, ooh, equations sound awful. So mm. she calculated exactly where she was going to attack. It was like zero kilometer zero 37 or 70 and she attacked kilometer zero she got in a wonderful break with some former teammates of mine amazing i've raced with anna before um she doesn't like the pack she went for it but very calculated with like almost zero country support no one was at the finish line for her when she won and what's going on is the dutch have four riders that can medal with no team leader that's willing to sacrifice. So they're like, you know, everyone's looking at the Dutch and Anna gets 10 minutes. <laughs> Which is a long ways. With a, with a Peloton of 67. We go, we can go back on that, Lance. That just still is Peloton well, I of 67. Think, I think that's a big, a big problem too. And, and something that's worth definitely talking more about <laughs> the fact that I think cycling is probably the only sport where you change the actual sport the day that you do it in the Olympics. I mean, nobody's used to racing with a team of four. That's in a field crazy. of 67. In a I mean, field of saw, 67. When you yeah. saw the start, you're just like, 
Nancy okay, is this is this yeah. a start or is this a, a, a large breakaway? <laughs> or has this been has this been has some selection been made? Like it, mm-hmm. yeah. But yeah. my my favorite, which this is going to be one of my votes, is that Anna, like she calculated it. She trained, you know, she's she's like, what, a privateer of the Olympics, dare mm-hmm. we say. <laughs> and she trained like self-supported her, you know, self to get there, does all the things. And I uh, had it calculated um, a little luck involved. But I appreciate, too. They're like, oh, do you want to race world tour next year? She's like, nah, I got my job. I like like controlling my controllables. I don't need you. So she's taken her Olympic medal and she's going to go back to the Olympics again, keep winning her national championships, but she's not letting anyone control her anymore. She got mad and she did the best she could and she won. Well, and it must be a big deal. And I mean, Austria is, is, is a small country. I mean, I don't know how many gold medals they had uh, this summer, but I have to one. It was the first gold medal in the Summer Olympics for Austria since 2004. They're much wow. more known for their Winter Olympics. Did you, are, is this just, are you just an encyclopedia? What is going on here? <laughs> all these stats, I love it. Okay, so, all right, so there you have it. Like, she, she must be, she, uh, I would imagine she's like the queen of Austria at the moment. That's a big damn deal. So good for her. She could, yeah, you're right. She can do whatever she wants. And she went back to work. As a PhD, you know, doctor in math. Oh, God. I mean, you think, imagine me, right? The dumb kid from Plano. Like, whatever you just said that she is or does, like, I can't even, That I don't even know what that is. Yeah. Uh, okay, down the list. And again, these are in no particular order. Um, and this one, boy, and I, and I and I've been meaning to shout this out <clears throat> because it was uh, it, she did this during the tour last summer. Leah Goldstein wins Ram. Okay, now if I just stopped right there, most people would be like, "Oh, cool, she beat all the women. She was the first woman." No, 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 no. Let me say it again. She wins Ram. Beats everybody. Uh, raced across women America. Yeah. Win, raced across America, three thousand miles just kicks everybody's ass i mean and she's like and and, and by the way has this <clears throat> interesting personal story like she was like raised in israel and she was in the special forces and like uh, imagine like she's just cruising, along, <laughs> cruising across america like i am kicking everybody's ass including mm-hmm. the men and i was israeli special forces so whatever like it also, is such she's insane and mari and i both raced mm-hmm. against her so she's she's 52 years old winning overall race across America and she finishes to win at 7 p.m. The dude that finishes second, 1 p.m. the next day. <laughs> well, and there were only three finishers, I think, because it was such a horrific year with the weather and it was the, I think, unbelievable heat that they were having. So she just basically out survived everybody. Yeah, the also, stories, the, the stories that come out of that thing, I mean, the, 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 uh, they do sleep, right? They sleep, mm-hmm. I guess, you know, uh, uh, you know, some people sleep less than others, but you're basically riding 20 to 22 hours a day. Yeah. Like, so she um, also before this, by the way, she's world champion Bantam classic for uh, kickboxing. So this is Jesus. before the nine years in the special forces for the Israeli army. And but then she, she, did she, that as a, she did that as a teenager, right? Wasn't 17, she, like 18. The, she was, she won overall when she was a, when she was a teenager, not the juniors, but everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So for all you people that drive down the road and, you know, just get too close to cyclists, just watch out for this one. Cause you never, you get to the red light. She drops some, some, some judo on your ass. <laughs> Well, that was a thing when we were racing, it was always like, you just didn't want to get on her bad side. You know what I mean? There are people that you can mess with a little bit. And then there are people that you're like, maybe not so much with her. (laughs) Yeah. I was a big fan. Um, she, she did some training camps with me up in Marin, like when she was, she was racing still right when I started and she was actually very nice. There's her elbows are not as sharp as you would think. She's a lovely person. I bought her book. I read it. Um, at the time, um, she also, had all these accomplishments and then she had a horrific accident the same place I got life lighted out at Cascade Cycling Classic and she was in the hospital for two and a half months and they didn't think mm. she would ride again um but there she goes 11 days and plus change to win Ram now at 52 years old and she's like my one of my special skills is I don't need to sleep so she rode 40 hours so I looked up the sleep schedule so back to my stats Lance sorry but she rode oh, the I, first, lo- I love it I love the go, first girl. 40 hours straight 
And then they're like, okay, now she might need sleep. So she did then like 24 hours on the bike, three hours of sleep. And then like, as she gets closer, they're like, yeah, 24 hours on the bike, an hour and a half of sleep. And she's like, this is what I do. Oh no, I couldn't do it. I I, I, I would be a complete (laughs) psychopath. Like if I, if no, 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 no. My, my, my loved ones would be like, no, he can't do that. He, he will literally turn into like the Unabomber. Like I'd be a just terrible person. Oh I mean, yeah. That, that just, no, oh. no. In, in, in trying to nail the nutrition, like imagine that, like you're going to go for 40 hours. Like how are, how are we doing that math? Like, ugh. It's pretty wild. She must be using the glucose monitoring or something. And she must have had a hell of a head start. If you, I mean, if you go 40 mm-hmm. hours straight, you're, yeah. and, and everybody stops at 20 or 22 hours, and you just keep, man, right out of the gate. I God. can't even imagine not having the sleep. That would Is she going to go back? Is she going to do that? Is she going to try to repeat? Yeah, because she actually wanted to break the 10 day barrier. So she was upset. And she actually oh, collapsed like an hour before the finish. But she's like, I had a really big buffer. I'm like, what, like a minute? You know, because we're thinking our races. I'm like, yeah, you, you can walk across. And he's like, oh, no, the guy's going to finish like in 12 hours after me. No, 14, 16. <laughs> like, Man. I mean, I'm like, maybe just walk. Maybe it's just time to start <laughs> Well, walking. she did walk towards the end. I, I read <laughs> that she was walking the last part of it. Some of and it. she did a lot of liquid calories. Mm-hmm. I know. Uh, I'm like, I can't imagine Ugh. doing that much liquid, like just a bunch of, I don't know, insert high carbohydrate <laughs> mix brand here, but just Ooh. something that makes my gut just turn. However, so my vote, I really like this because let's just think born in Canada, grew up in Israel. Wait, you, you cannot pollute the system. You're, you're trying yes. to, you're trying to sway favor. <laughs> Almost died. And she's a world champion <laughs> kickboxer that just won Ram. I, I think it's a cool story. I, okay, I, 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 I hear cool you. It, however, you do not get a vote. <laughs> but I, but it, but you, now you just, all your fans on here are like, oh, well, then I guess so. But it's. Uh, well, I got no, more votes. We, I have all okay. the votes. I vote okay. for everybody. All right. <laughs> That's before, not possible. <laughs> before we get to the last two here, uh, today's show also brought to you by Athletic Greens. Uh, talked about it on the men's show. This is, I, I, I religiously use this. I'm telling you, and I, and look at this, these are my travel packs, but uh, 75 incredible ingredients Th- this for me in terms of performance and, and gut health and all of the things that it does, high quality vitamins, minerals, whole source, superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens. They've reinvented the thing like 50 times. Cause they're just, they think, well, we can always make it better. And they do uh, <clears throat> total game changer. And uh, as I say all the time, and I, and, and I, I, um, I rely on Dr. Peter Atia a lot just for, you know, I want to live to be 100. But when I'm 90, I want to be able to k- pick up my great, great gan- grandkids and not be just sitting around. Right. And so uh, he will tell you if you do one supplement religiously, it is athletic greens. Well, and it tastes good. And, and, it, and it does I mean, taste good. I yeah, think people see it and, you know, the green, you know, like, <laughs> oh, oh, this is not. No, yeah. it's it's absolutely pleasant. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and the folks over there got a big heart. They understand that, that, uh, that we have done a fair amount of damage to our planet. So they, they invest or reinvest a ton into efforts to conserve and, and preserve the rainforest where so many of these vital ingredients come from. Um, they, they, and as a business, I tell you, I've watched this business. It is up and to the right. It's a rocket ship. Uh, let me make it easy for you. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you got to do is go to Athletics Greens, athletic, sorry, athleticgreens.com slash the move. And again, that's athleticgreens.com slash the move. And take ownership of your health. Make 2022 uh, a high-performing one. Okay. Down to two to go, and then we'll we'll start to look at the votes. Although Allison has already tried to curry favor with her people. Get ready! Like, I'm doing more favorites. Gotta, Everyone's my favorite. We have a female version of the Hincapi. You know, just uh, all these you know, all these followers on Instagram, and you know, pff, Jesus. All right, yeah, I'm and I fan girl really hard, just like Hincapi. I'm a fan girl. Yes. Yes. Of Mari. <laughs> Mari's a badass. Aww. I don't know if she's Leah Goldstein badass, but she's a badass. All right. I don't know. Leah has never trying. won world. So. <laughs> okay, and I and I I'm I, I've tried to get this pronunciation right because this one they, she throws you off with this this hard G in the middle. Uh, Lizzie Dignan, Dignan, just mm-hmm. like 
rolling up to Perry Bay and like, I don't know what y'all are doing today, but I'm just going to kick everybody's ass. And, and, and again, about damn time, right? A women's Perry Bay. I mean, yeah, definitely. let's go. Um, Lizzie Dagnan is amazing. Um, she's British. Uh, and she wins the inaugural women's Perry Bay solos the last 82 K. Um, a little background on Lizzie. I'm a, I'm a big fan girl raced against her a lot. Uh, my whole career. Uh, she was 2015 world champion, 2012 London silver medal, which was heartbreaking. Right. Cause she's yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she started in track. So she was a 2009 gold medal at the world championships for a team pursuit. Um, and she gets the first official triple crown. So she's won the tour de Flanders Liege, Bastogne Liege, and now she won Paris Roubaix. So here we go. Right. Like this woman's incredible. Um, she's boy, just attacked the race. She's had a baby and she was one of the first female cyclists. I believe that got maternal leave as she had, and Trek Segafredo did not sever a contract. She was able to have a baby come back and keep racing, which I think is mother effing badass. <laughs> yeah. I, it's rare. You get me to say anything good about those guys up in Wisconsin, but I, I, I got to <laughs> give them that. That's no, that's the right thing to do. A chapeau. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And look at her. She's coming back and, you know, um, but 82 K solo. And I'm going to say like, it's, it's for me, it's. Wow. You got, a, you got a delivery truck. There? What's what's going on here? Is there a drag race? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, <laughs> <laughs> I think like the best part is I, um, it was sloppy for the women's as the men's, right? It's just like a slip and slide. It looked like an amusement park. It looked hard. I've always wanted to race Paris Bay. I never got to in my career. So I'm jealous, but watching the live feed, I'm like, Ooh, Oh no, I would die. Like <laughs> I'm hitting the cobbles. I am just like sliding into the abyss of who knows. So, um, anyone that could survive that race, I, chapeau men's or women's race um and i don't think lizzie is actually going for the win she just attacked before it got really sloppy and she's got enough power and finesse and if you look at it you know voss is chasing her through the more like you know voss <laughs> terrain and lizzie like has other power in other areas and just to like put her head out and go um and then to me it was just iconic with the a woman winning on the velodrome like i've ridden yep. that velodrome i've been in those showers i've done all of that but i like not to have that opportunity to be able to race this iconic event it still gives me chills um no it was a super exciting race though and it sounded to me like she had been in charge of leading into the first section of pave for her team and so and then she had a gap when she went into it and just like kept going and to me it's a lot about like how you know their director races too it's always looking for the opportunity and then going for it so I thought that that was really cool. But then towards the end, when Voss was chasing and bringing the gap down, it was just such exciting racing for women and to have it streamed out there and for people to get to see just how good women are and what racing can look like. It's it was an awesome moment to see for someone like me who would have loved to race it, too. I mean, it's huge. Yeah. <laughs> So, well, yeah, we've I still got, have all the chills, like the yeah. chills. Yeah. And, <laughs> chills. And we've and we've gone past the tipping point. Now, now it's mm -hmm. on, right? Like the, 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 nobody can walk this back, whether it's the UCI or AS or anybody, right? It's right. it's it's here to stay. But you know, it was cool after that too, is that Dagnan said that she's not going to retire anymore. And to me, I was talking to, um, you know, I was talking before about it, but that the fact that women now see an opportunity to stay in the sport and part of that is that she got the maternal leave and all that kind of stuff. It's just, um, it's incredible where cycling's going and now young women can actually look at it as a career where, you know, they don't have to make the decision to stop because they want to have a child or that they're not making enough money to get by. So I think in Perry Roubaix being a race this year for women was a big part of that all starting. It's all just kind of starting to happen now and watching it from the outside has just been awesome. And of yeah. course, like, like the men's race, it, it, it was a little unique in that it was, not in April, but it was at the end mm -hmm. of the year. And, um, I mean, we'll see what, you know, uh, we'll see what happens next April. I don't, it seems like the world's kind of freaking out again, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. but who knows, but, it, but nonetheless, they pulled it off, right. You mm -hmm. got to give ASO that like it, um, yes, postponed, yes, slightly different. Um, but it happened. 
Yeah, and that will give us a little chance to do an extra shout out to our partners at Zwift, but we love Zwift, <laughs> but they're sponsoring, you know, the Tour de France Flamme of X Zwift, mm-hmm. um, and they're probably going to make bigger waves in this area for women cycling, like yep. creating a world you actually want to ride in, is it virtual or in real life? And I think that's super impactful to have sponsors step up and, and give this opportunity for visibility and viability in women cycling. Murray, we had your teammate on the ride today, this uh, Amanda, <clears throat> she set the world I had to like check my ear, my ear thing. She was on discord with us as well. Mm-hmm. Um, she set the world record for amount of miles re- ridden in 24 hours on Swift. And I was like, Oh, well, how far was that? I'm thinking yeah. like, you know, maybe 300 miles, like 537 miles. Yeah. She is unique in that she can really just ride and for a long time without changing anything. So it's kind of like she set the records on the road too in her house near her home in Florida. Um, she, she has, said she has the world record for amount of miles ridden in a year. 86,000 breaks down to 237 yeah. miles a day. I mean, yeah. come on. <laughs> exactly. And not only that, but she did it on like a five mile course or something like that. She didn't even do it Forrest Gump style, like across the country and back or anything like that. She did it on one little loop by her home. That's dedication. Yeah. Mm. Slash no day job. I, it's, Slash. I'm impressed, but like, when do you work or sleep? I'm just curious. I would girl. need, I uh, and I don't, I don't want to fly in the face of, of athletic brewing, but I would need one hell of a stiff drink every day after doing that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Here's the last one. Uh, and again, we're, so, so the Italian, the entire Italian team's performance at, at the world's road race. Just to remind y'all, this was a different style of, of, of world championships. Typically, you know, you'll have 15 you know, on the men's side, 15 to 17 laps, the women's side, you know, 10 or 11, whatever it is. But at least, you know, it's, it's the same loop. This was, this was a classic style technique. I, I, I like to call it technicals, the amount of turns, the undulation, um, just, a, just a different, uh, different twist on, on the world's. I thought it was the most exciting world race or world championship race for both men and women. Like I thought it was, it's a very interesting race. Once again, I was like, Ooh, I'd be really bad at that. Too many turns. Very Mm -hmm. technical. A lot of turns. Yeah. (laughs) Pack position matters. (laughs) Mari's laughing because she knows right. she's been my director. Being her and I, director was painful sometimes. <laughs> if we could just get you to turn, yeah. those turns are or get out of too. the wind. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I like the wind. Drafting's cheating. Um, it's a really impressive win. So um, at World Championships this year, our current World Championship uh, champion is Elisa Balsamo, Italian. Fun fact, Lance, for you: I used to send her my jerseys when I raced for Mari on like 20 something and she was a fan and you ha- I had this dear friends that would be like oh like she's gonna she's really good I'm like yeah I'm sure she's really good she wants a jersey signed by you she make make me a on. kit oh that I, I have so selfies <laughs> yeah that is so cute <laughs> and then I'm watching the 2016 <laughs> world championships in Doha and sh- this is another I mean, I was I I raced on Astana, I guess, did you? And Italians, though, have an amazing dedication to teamwork. Like they they all get a boat. Like I think there's a, a reason that like, there's bonus structures. There's a re- like right. they I, I get think you're motivated. Right. Yep. Well, there's I know this for a fact. Of, okay. Yeah. There you go. You know that too, probably for a fact. But there's there is like you do not have to win worlds to be a world champion in Italy. Mm. Um, so I think some nations do it a little incorrectly where it's like the winner. And then you have all these people that worked really hard. I think Italians are probably notoriously known slash honored best for their teamwork. I don't know, Mari, you can tell me. I think well, it- I think you're right. I think that they really value it because they understand the sport. And so they understand the people who are putting in the work to make someone win. And I think that's something that gets lost like here sometimes is people don't understand what it takes to actually help someone win a race. And so... So that makes it more competition in inside the team. Sometimes I feel like, yeah. And it, it like the Italians, I feel like celebrate the team the most, like, and mm-hmm. the cash bonus structure, what I know from my teammates is was equal. So, I mean, everyone's making money. It's not like, Oh, just like you won the tour. You get yeah, all the but glory, I think right? That yeah. the, the celebration is a big part of it, that they're heroes in their hometown. If they were a part of that, that team that just won um, and the whole team appreciates the work that the one person did to help that win or if they won. So it's, uh, they just have such a good ethic in that. 
It's, it's so, I mean, that's the traditional way to ride, race bikes, right? That's, that's just so cool to see. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, maybe some of that's been lost or most likely some of that's been lost, but that's, that's kind of old school. Like that's what I love old school. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing I do too. Like I got, I was just sitting here trying to think of my time doing the world's back, but yeah, I mean, that's kids. That's the way it's supposed to work. <laughs> it is like, you know, helping your teammate, you know, win it's, that's like a part of, part of the sport and that's something to be celebrated and i think italians do a really good job of that um so they they went all in so if you have aliso longo Borghini, i call her lamborghini like you know um and she's just an amazing athlete for trek segafredo which by the way ina mari and i's friend Ina yo like boy ina tutenberg's probably one of the best cyclists of all time um directs for trek segafredo had already signed elisa balsamo hmm. so she, she did a good job <laughs> <laughs> and then she freaking wins worlds and she won worlds under uh, another director. Mari and I both worked under. So like, I mean, it, it's a small world, but, but she's won junior world championships under just a lot of good team, uh, teamwork. Uh, Skylar Schneider, by the way, got second that year at junior worlds in 2016, who now mm-hmm. races for Legion. Um, a U.S. Is this rider. the girl that kicked out, kicked my, just, just, just destroyed me at that race you made me go do up there. Is the same girl? Taylor? No, Taylor. Taylor did that to you. Taylor Wilds. Oh. <laughs> Taylor. Taylor dropped Lance and he can't get over it. Where was that? Uh, it's I like don't a know. It's fish like a rock. <laughs> wait, you guys are sorry. You're breaking up. You can't hear. But wait, you sent oh. me. Wait, when is that? Anyway. No, I, I'll I'll send that to you later. Um. Okay. Anyway, so I think there's a lot to this is she's a 23 year old world champion mm. that's amazing young. it's very young i mean she wore my jersey's training so there's another reason to vote for that Super dope. <laughs> Super dope. <laughs> and uh and i think it's just having somebody just that got third at the olympics leading you out so i what i think into this is the dutch we're a little smarter. They're like, okay, we screwed up the Olympics. We had four medal contenders and we raced like four individual athletes. And then they come in to the world championships and they're like, okay. And they were working hard. You have Van Vluten closing gaps, like none other. Everyone's coming down. The fields whittled down to 24. Personally, one of my prize is Niedoma because the Polish rider, she's based, she's racing with like one other teammate. She's attacking, attacking. She gets third. She's making the race hard AF. But we're coming down in the finish and you have Borghini who just got third at the Olympics leading out this 23 year old and just full send doesn't even hit top 10 like just like quits like after she's done leading out and Voss is crying. I, I had a hard time cheering like I wanted Voss to win another one. I love Voss. She's the boss. But I just loved, though, the fact that, you know, she came through at the end, you know, because Borghi gave such a great lead out and you saw that moment of hesitation and, and then she just went, you know, I it was such a great finish. It was so exciting. All right, I well, feel you bad know what? <laughs> yeah, well, we got our I, uh, Tiff sent us the results. So this is. Oh, you're going to be I have a few honorable mentions. Like when do Why we do, do <laughs> like, do we have a few honorable mentions? We do that before or after we don't know Lance. We just got here. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Oh. Well, we can, we can do it as we close out, but I, okay. I did want to, to, to give, um, Anna von der Bergen a little kudos for retiring at the top of her game. Right. You know, okay. she always the best way to do it. She <laughs> won the gold medal in 2016. She's a world champion in 2019, you know, uh, she's won the Giro three times. She's the queen <clears throat> of the flesh. Like she won the flesh five consecutive years. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> you what's know next? that finish. <laughs> what's next? Yeah, I do. What's so next? So next would be, I want to give a shout out to Christina Birch, who um, just got selected to be an astronaut by not NASA. And so that goes to our brainy women cyclists out there. <laughs> That's she amazing. was a member. Yeah, she was a member of the U.S. Team Pursuit. She was a world champion a few years ago, was an alternate for this year's Olympic team, and then just decided, I'm going to go be an astronaut. Since Wait, I'm so she's going to hang team. on a so back up. She's going to go into outer space? <laughs> yeah, like, she's going to go into outer space. Yeah, there were like a, something like 100,000 people trying to become an astronaut, and it kept getting whittled down and whittling down, and then she ended up being one of the ones selected. And I think that it was so maybe cool. 12 people selected or something like that. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. Okay. Should we get to our results? Yeah. So uh, 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 we just just talked about it, but coming in at number six is the Italian team's performance at the World Championships, despite 
the, the Allison <laughs> sending jerseys and all this stuff. <laughs> Sweetie, it, they, that's number six. Okay. So number Mari, five. Number five. Are the Swiss women with a podium sweep at the Olympics? Mountain biking. Allison? Yeah, number four, we've got Chloe Dygart. Don't call it a comeback because the comeback is yet to come. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> the start of a comeback. Uh, number three... Leah Goldstein winning Ram the race across America overall. That's right. You heard me overall. <laughs> and number two is Anna Kiesenhofer at the Olympics riding from kilometer zero. And drum roll, <laughs> number one, our favorite Lizzie Dagnan winning Yay. Paris-Roubaix, the inaugural women's Paris-Roubaix. Yep. yep. Freaking get ready. We're yeah. going to see more with the Tour de France Farm of X. I, I tell you, mm -hmm. I think I agree with that. And I, and I, I think Roubaix is just it, it. It holds such a special place in people's heart. Like it, it you know, it's it's that race that people are like, man, man, one time I saw this bike race on in the old days used to be on wide world of sports like these dudes riding and now dudes and dudettes riding across all these <laughs> stones. Like it's it's just people remember Roubaix. That. So that's that's her performance. Exceptional in an iconic race. That is finally happening for the, the some of the most badass people on planet Earth. So worthy winner. I love this winner because I think it's back to what Mari and I were just talking about. Um, also, before you got on, you were late. I don't know if you remember that. I was, but, I was um. showering. I was showering. <laughs> but this is the change of climate and women cycling. And it's a slow build. We're going back to being able to watch these women race and where this visibility, able to watch it, creates these new heroes. And then it, it creates this economic kind of snowball effect. So that's when we really do think sponsors like Swift, right? Tour yeah, de France exactly. Femme of X Whipped. Who knows what else they'll do? You can ride with Mari on a Sunday. How often do you get a ride with a Olymp <laughs> Olympic yeah. medalist and world champion? Because if you guys don't know that, Mari's an uh, Olympic medalist and world champion. And world champion, that's right. Oh, thanks. Yeah, but you need to come ride with us on Sufferfest on uh -huh. Sunday mornings. Suffer Sunday. Are you going to come? Lance, you got to show up. <clears throat> uh, you're breaking up a little bit. <laughs> but well, we really do thank you guys for voting. <clears throat> no, um, absolutely. Even, yeah. And check out the new women's merchandise. Ooh, yeah, women's yeah, merch. Women. I need to get yeah. some of that. Lance, send me some. <laughs> I, uh, right now, I'm going to get up and go do that. I'm going to go straight to the FedEx store or whatever it is, just not the post office, and, and I'll send you whatever you want. Oh, sweet. Did we like merch. Bag. Did y'all get that dig? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, y'all, th thanks for doing this. This is going to be fun. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have fun with this stuff and uh, about damn time. So thanks to you all, and thanks for everybody for tuning in, and thanks for voting. Thanks for participating, and uh, we'll see you all soon.